The Winter King Episode 8 starts with a steamy scene as Arthur and Lady Guinevere consummate their wedding. It looks like they are settling well into Demonia, or so we thought. Lady Morgan interrupts the newlyweds and reminds Arthur that he has a duty to his people and must attend to the kingdom. High on the agenda is King Cadwys, who seeks an audience with him. Lady Guinevere suggests tagging along, and we get a sense that Lady Morgan is wary of her. Lady Guinevere asks Arthur to consider showing King Cotty's respect since he lost his land. She can relate to how he feels. Lady Guinevere does her best to welcome King Cotty's, and he is impressed by her. He jokingly tells Arthur he understands why he rejected King Gorfid's daughter. They get to the matter at hand, and King Cotty's asks to replace Owain as King Modred's protector. Arthur tells him it is a generous offer, but he won't accept it. He reminds King Cotty's that it is his job to look after Iska on Damonia's behalf, which should be enough. Elsewhere, Durful visits Avalon and is welcomed warmly by Nimue and his friends. He tells them all about his adventures in Powys and Arthur's wedding. Nimue warns him to be careful of Samsung, who officiated Arthur's wedding. Back at Caer Cadarn, Samsung brings forth a petition to remind Arthur about his promise to give him a church. He proposes a site near Avalon, and Arthur gives him his permission against Lady Morgan's wishes. After Samsung leaves, Lady Guinevere says he reeks of naked ambition, and Arthur insists he gave him his word. He wants his word to stand for something, and Lady Morgan can't help but scoff at this remark. Arthur asks if she wants to say something, and she declines. Instead, she leaves to tend to Madrid, and Lady Guinevere asks to come along. On the way, she tries to win over Lady Morgan but fails when she refers to Madrid as a weak baby instead of a king. Nonetheless, Lady Guinevere tells Lady Morgan that she married Arthur out of love. She believes they understand each other as outcasts. Lady Morgan questions if anyone truly understands Arthur, which Lady Guinevere answers she is learning. The latter adds that she and Lady Morgan can decide to be friends or enemies, but ultimately, Arthur will need them both. It seems she wants them to be mindful of their position in Arthur's life. Later, Arthur warns Lady Guinevere that Lady Morgan is protective of him. They also talk about their future. Arthur hopes once Modred comes of age, they can be farmers. He pictures they can get a place, farm, and raise their children. On the other hand, Lady Guinevere wonders if she can ever return home. However, she thinks they will be fine wherever they go as long as they have each other. In the meantime, Nimue is surprised to see Samsum and his followers start building their church near Avalon's sacred land. She stops by Caer Cadarn to take the matter up with Arthur, but he asks her to get along with Samsum. He argues everyone has a right to worship their god. Sadly, Arthur is on his way to fight King Cotys, who has gone rogue. The king has taken the Colonel Mines by force and enslaved the miners. He has also declared Iska an independent state. It is his way of challenging Arthur. However, Arthur comes up with a plan to confront King Cotys. Durful reckons he knows the area and can lead the men, but Arthur asks him to remain behind and protect Lady Guinevere and Lady Morgan. Arthur wants to leave behind a man he can trust and hopes to hear King Gorfid's demands for breaking his promise. He asks Lady Morgan to send a messenger to him if King Gorfid sends word before his return. Lady Guinevere wishes him safety and victory as he leaves. She feels frustrated since she can't help him and has to remain behind. She wishes she was a man, and Durful jokes even men get left behind. Lady Guinevere comforts him saying maybe Arthur wishes to keep them both safe. Later that night, news from Powys arrives. Apparently, Bishop Bidwin has concluded his negotiations with King Gorift. The king has stated his price in gold, and Lady Morgan is prepared to take it to him. Lady Guinevere questions if it is the right thing to do, given that Arthur had asked them to wait for his return before responding to King Gorfid's demands. However, Lady Morgan insists she can handle it and doesn't appreciate her decisions being questioned. Seeing she is losing the battle, Lady Guinevere asks her to take Durful along. She also cautions her to be careful about King Gorfide. 
He has an affinity for making women suffer. She is worried Gorford will manipulate Lady Morgan to do his bidding. The following morning, Nimu holds a ritual asking the gods to help her with the Samsung situation. After a while, the gods give her an answer. She dresses up in her druidess cloak and visits Samsum. She proceeds to curse them and warns them to stop building the church. She vows they will get a strange illness and die if they do. On the other hand, Arthur confronts King Cotes and gives him a chance to surrender. Unfortunately, the king refuses to back down. He asks for a duel with Arthur. Throughout the duel, he insists on mocking Arthur. He calls him a bastard who wants power for himself. According to Cotes, Arthur wants to take the kingdom away from Madrid. Initially, Arthur wanted to arrest Cotes, but the man insisted on fighting back. Ultimately, Arthur kills him and returns to Caer Cadarn. Upon arriving, he tells Lady Guinevere that he really wanted to find a peaceful solution, but had no choice. She comforts him, saying he did what had to be done. She also tells him about Lady Morgan leaving for Powys. He gets angry since he had asked them to wait. However, Lady Guinevere assures him Lady Morgan will manage by herself. As they talk, they get word that trouble is brewing in Avalon. Three men from Samsum's church fell ill and died. Samsum believes Nimu poisoned them and wants justice. He tries to confront her, but she nearly sets him on fire and casts snakes upon them. After hearing this, Arthur takes off, heading to Avalon. He checks on Samsum's men. Samsum insists his men were poisoned, and he demands justice. Arthur promises to speak to Nimue and get to the truth. She, in turn, tells him that she cursed the men and their death is the will of the gods. Arthur remains skeptical and tries to talk to Nimue about peace. She argues that Britain has two ongoing wars, one over religion and another over the Saxons. She is worried Arthur is giving the Christians a chance to offend the gods. She says the gods assured her they would protect Britain if they did away with Christianity. Arthur finds opium lettuce, customarily used to induce sleep. However, if used in large quantities, it can kill. He asks Nimu for the truth again, but she is adamant she poisoned no one. Apparently, it was the will of the gods. Concurrently, Lady Morgan and Durfel get closer on their way to Powys. She confides in Durfel that she thinks Arthur believes he made the right choice by marrying Lady Guinevere. She thinks Arthur always makes things so hard for himself. She adds that she finds it annoying since Arthur has been right so far. They arrive in Powys, and both King Gorfid and Bishop Bidwin welcome them. Seeing Bishop Bidwin calms Lady Morgan's worries and fear. The king insists on hosting them and treating her to a banquet. At the banquet, the princess asks if Lady Guinevere is happy, and Durfel answers she is. However, Things turn dark when King Gorfid announces it is time for the night's highlight. He has his men seize Lady Morgan and Durfel. They are escorted to a field, and to their surprise, they see Bishop Bidwin crucified on a post. King Gorfid says Arthur is a coward, whore lover and a bastard. He believes Arthur is no longer his ally. Lady Morgan begs for Bishop's life to be spared, but to no avail. Bishop Bidwin confesses his love for Lady Morgan and finds peace before being killed. The episode ends with King Gorfid sending Durfel to Arthur to relay a message of an upcoming war. The execution of Bishop Bidwin is officially the start of a civil war between Powys and Damonia. The episode review the consequences of Arthur's decision to marry Lady Guinevere have only just begun. As expected, King Gorfid has a sinister plan in mind. With Bishop Bidwin gone, Modred is only left with one protector. Even though Arthur has sworn to protect Modred until he is ready to take this throne, we can't help but wonder if Merlin's vision will start unfolding, forcing Arthur to choose a different path. In this episode, it seems Gorfid is not the only one waging war. Nimu is also waging war against the Christians and refuses to give peace a chance. She is already angry with how Arthur handled the Gundelius issue and won't back down this time. However, as we have seen, nothing will get between Arthur's dream of peace. If she is not careful, 
Arthur will kill her just like he killed Owain and King Caudes. This episode also highlights Arthur's issues as he tries to protect the kingdom. Most people question why he married Lady Guinevere and broke his word to King Gorfid. Lady Guinevere is also different and outspoken, which might rub people from Demonia the wrong way. She is already having a hard time fitting in. It won't be easy for the newlyweds. With only two chapters left in this season, we'll be looking forward to seeing if Britain will prevail. We also hope to find out how Merlin's journey into the north is going. Did he find the Horn of Bran?